Story recapped here. Today, I'm going to show an animated, adventure, and family film called, James and the Giant Peach. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. James Henry Trotter is a kind and optimistic little boy living near the English seaside with his loving parents. On his seventh birthday, James's family celebrates by having a picnic at the beach. As they gaze upon the clouds, his father hands him a travel book and tells him about the tallest building in the world, the Empire State Building. It's located in a land across the Atlantic Ocean, in a city where all dreams come true, New York City, and that's where all three of them will be going one day. But James's dreams are cut short when one day, an angry rhinoceros appears out of nowhere and eats his father and mother. As sad as James was, his troubles were just beginning. Now an orphan, James is sent to his two ugly, horrible, wicked, and self-absorbed aunts, Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker. His aunts have a run-down house on a hill where nothing ever grew. In its tiny and dusty attic, James slept. Aunt Sponge is an enormous lady with a protruding nose and horrible toes, while Aunt Spiker is a tall, bony, woman whose cheeks cut like a knife. The two terrible ants wake James up at the crack of dawn ordering him to chop the wood, pull the weeds, and do all the chores around the house. Left with no other choice, James sets upon his tasks for the day while Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker sunbathe in their ghastly sundresses at the front lawn, too busy admiring themselves in their handheld mirrors. Suddenly, the silence of chopping woods catches their attention. Aunt Sponge finds James sitting with his travel book and reprimands him, Aunt Spiker snatches the book out of his hand, accusing him of leaving, and hands it to her sister. The aunt scold him, telling him that he has no other place to go, and threatens by saying that if he leaves, the rhino will come and eat him, just like what it did to his parents. Aunt Sponge tears up his travel book and they order him to stop daydreaming and get back to work. Later that evening, James is finally done with his chores and climbs up the house to see his two aunts finish all that's left of dinner. Aunt Spiker teases him and tells him that there's something in the oven, but to James's dismay, it's only a plate of two raw fish heads. He grabs a piece of leftover food from the trash as he's ordered to go back to his room. James eats the few potato chips left in the trash bag and spots a spider on his window. He lets it down and tells it to hide away from his aunts. After his tiny dinner, he takes out his crayons and draws on the trash bag, missing his parents and dreaming of the day he sees the city of dreams. He folds the bag into a lantern and uses the last candlestick from his last birthday to light it up. He releases the lantern into the night sky, setting it free together with his dreams. James wakes up to Aunt Spiker screaming early in the morning. She has found his friend, the spider. He takes the spider into his hands and runs into Aunt Sponge in the doorway with the bug spray. They tumble down the stairs. Aunt Spiker comes down running and hits her sister on the face with the bug swatter. With his two aunts distracted, James runs outside and sets the spider free. When he looks up, an old man, in a decorated uniform appears in front of him and seems to know his name. The old man tells James that the answer to all his problems is inside a little bag and hands him the lantern that he flew last night. James peeks into the bag and sees thousands of glowing green worms. The old man tells him that they are crocodile tongues that hold more magic than anything else in the world. He can use the crocodile tongues to get to the place that he's ever dreamed of, New York City. James accepts the crocodile tongues but the old man warns him, telling him that he shouldn't let the tongues get away, for if they do, they will work their magic on whoever or whatever they meet first. James nods his head and all of a sudden, a strong gust of wind blows and the old man disappears. As James runs back up to the house, he trips, letting loose the thousand crocodile tongues upon the old tree that stood on the lawn. He desperately tries to catch them, but it's too late. Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker have caught up to him and scolds him yet again. Aunt Spiker tells her sister to beat him, but being too lazy, Aunt Sponge says it's too early in the morning for a beating. As they drag James back to the house, Aunt Sponge spots a single peach on the old tree. Aunt Spiker looks up shocked to see anything other than a dead leaf on their property. As Aunt Sponge pushes James up the tree to get the fruit, Aunt Spiker stops them, exclaiming that the peach is growing. Puzzled at the absurd situation, the trio stand back as the peach quickly grows in size, eventually outweighing the tree itself and resting its bottom on their lawn. The peach has grown almost as big as the house itself. Suddenly, Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker come up with a money-making scheme. They build an enclosure around the peach and advertise it as the greatest peach in the world, charging a hefty fee for anyone who wants to see it. James watches the spectacle from his window in his tiny attic room, a tear rolling down his eye, as his only wish was to play with the children outside. Later that night, his aunts call him downstairs as they're counting the money and order him to pick up the garbage outside. Among the trash on the ground, 
James finds his lantern and inside a single crocodile tongue. It hops its way down and hides under the peach. His stomach growling with hunger, James takes a bite out of the peach. Unbeknownst to him, the crocodile tongue jumps into his peach and he accidentally eats it. Suddenly, a hole emerges from where he got the piece of fruit, and with it, a light beckoning him to come inside. James, curious as ever, goes inside the peach and travels through the tunnel. As he reaches the end of the tunnel, he hears several voices and falls through a hole. He lands in a room full of human-sized anthropomorphic insects. The kind-hearted Mrs. Ladybug. The old Mr. Grasshopper. The strong-willed Mr. Centipede. The blind Mr. Earthworm. The mysterious Miss Spider. And the deaf Glowworm. James learns that the insects have lived on the hill for decades and are planning to escape the clutches of Sponge and Spiker. He tells the group that he's scared of leaving because the rhino might eat him, but Mr. Grasshopper assures him that he has never seen a single rhino on that miserable hill. The insects share with James their dream life and he realizes they all have the same goal, to go out to the city where all dreams come true. Their jolly gathering is interrupted when Ant Sponge and Ant Spiker call out for James. Mr. Centipede climbs outside the peach and starts sawing the peach's branch with his sharp claws. The peach finally breaks loose from the tree crushing Ant Sponge and Ant Spiker who have taken refuge in their car. Much to the ant's dismay, the giant peach rolls down the hill, making its way through the town, and then bouncing off the local church. It flies into the air, rolling down and down into the farmlands until it reaches the end of the cliff and falls down into the ocean. After the bugs regain their composure, they go outside the peach to inspect their situation. They find themselves floating in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. The bugs wonder about what they're going to do now when James reaches into his coat pocket and finds his travel book intact. He opens it up and sees the peach on the map, already on its way to New York City. The group decides to head for the city of dreams and tries to come up with a way to travel. Just then, James comes up with an idea. They're going to catch and use the seagulls to fly their peach all the way to New York. Using a reluctant Mr. Earthworm as bait, James manages to catch one seagull and tie it up with Miss Spider's threat. Before they can catch the other birds, they hear a deep rumbling coming from the ocean. All of a sudden, a great mechanical shark emerges from the water. The shark sets its eyes on the peach and is coming for them. James asks for Miss Spider's net as Mr. Centipede wiggles Mr. Earthworm to get the seagull's attention. As the birds dive forward, James traps them with the net and they tie the rest of the threads onto the birds. They set the seagulls loose and the force lifts the peach up into the air. But they're not free from the shark yet. The shark launches an arrow and drags the peach towards it. It shoots several torpedo sharks, cutting loose a few of their birds. James hops onto Mr. Grasshopper and they catch the birds before they can escape while Mrs. Ladybug knocks out the rest of the torpedo sharks. Miss Spider hammers out the arrow, saving Mr. Centipede, and sending the arrow back to the mechanical shark. Its own arrow ties itself around the shark sending it to overdrive and causing it to explode. The bugs celebrate on top of the peach and thank James for his brilliant idea. They set their course and head for New York. As they travel, James reassures an insecure Mr. Earthworm. He tells the worm that if he finds himself in a bad situation, he remembers what his parents used to tell him, to look at them another way, in a more positive light. The peach flies high above the clouds and their journey is long and tiring. Soon enough, the bugs grow hungry, especially Mr. Centipede who starts hallucinating food. After fighting with Mr. Grasshopper over a crumb of soda bread, James insists that they don't need to fight for food. Their whole ship is a piece of food. It's a giant peach after all. They have enough food for five voyages. The crew feasts on their newfound meal and end up with full stomachs. Later that night, Miss Spider tucks James into a woven nest. He learns that Miss Spider was the spider on his window that he saved from his two terrible ants. She reassures the little boy, removing his doubts and fears, and soon enough, James drifts off to sleep. He dreams of himself as a caterpillar with his two wicked ants in their rickety car hunting him down with a bug spray that turns into a large and terrifying rhino. When James wakes up, his face is covered in snowflakes. He goes on top of the peach and finds the crew lost in the middle of a frozen ocean with shipwrecks. He sees Mr. Centipede and Mr. Grasshopper fighting each other. Mr. Grasshopper accuses the centipede of getting them lost. The bugs confront the centipede, saying that if he had indeed traveled the world, then why did they end up getting lost? Mr. Centipede caves in and admit that he never traveled the world, but he did spend most of his time between the pages of a National Geographic magazine. Mr. Grasshopper kicks him in the face out of anger and tells the crew that they need a compass if they want to get out of this frozen place. James asks if there's a compass on board one of the ships. 
Mr. Grasshopper says that there probably is, but only a fool would venture out into the icy waters. Mr. Centipede hears this and hoping for redemption, jumps into the freezing sea. James and Miss Spider follow to save him. They dive into the deep waters and find themselves among a pirate's treasure trove. Meanwhile, Mr. Centipede spots a compass in the hands of a pirate captain. He takes the compass, but all of a sudden, the skeletons come alive. James and Miss Spider reach the ship and see the skeletons torturing the centipede. Before they could cut the bug in half, James intervenes and kicks the pirate. Miss Spider joins in and kicks the rest of the pirates. A game of catch for the compass ensues, with each side snatching the prize from one another. Free from his ropes, Mr. Centipede catches the compass and hands it to James and Miss Spider. The bugs on the peach pull on the thread, pulling James and Miss Spider to safety. Mr. Centipede jumps off to fight the rest of the pirates. When they resurface, Miss Spider jumps back into the water. Just then, the centipede's hat floats up. Fearing the worst, Miss Spider stands back in horror as the pirate captain surfaces, but it turns out, it's Mr. Centipede, alive and well wearing the pirate's hat. The bugs welcome back their friend, now having redeemed himself. With their compass, they set sail for the big city. In the evening, Mr. Grasshopper relieves Mr. Centipede of his steering duty. James looks at his map, seeing that they're almost at their dream destination when he hears the sound of a violin. He joins Mr. Grasshopper as the insect plays some songs for him. He reminds the little boy to brighten up because if it weren't for him, they wouldn't have gotten very far. He doesn't need to feel lonely because they are his new family now. Just then, they hear a foghorn blowing from below. They look down and see the clouds part, revealing the shining city of New York and Lady Liberty. Their celebration is cut short by a strong gust of wind that blows off their compass, setting them off course. The nearby clouds have now turned into a storm in the form of a rhino. Thunder booms, lightning crackles, as the rhino marches towards them. The bugs climb into the rigging but James chooses to face the beasts. He remembers what his parents used to tell him. Look at it another way. He screams at the rhino, telling the beast that he's not afraid of it. He bravely faces the rhino as the lightning strikes the peach, cutting the rigging, and sending the peach down from the skies. James wakes up and coughs out the crocodile tongue that he ate. He finds himself transformed into his human self and alone inside the peach. He climbs out of the fruit and sees the shining city of New York below him. He looks for the Empire State Building, unaware that he's actually sitting right on top of it. Down on the streets, juices coming from the peach disrupt the citizens. A child calls out from the balcony, telling an officer that there's a boy out there. The officer calls the station and asks for the biggest crane in the city. The crane arrives and begins to lift off the peach. One of the crane workers tells James that he's sitting on top of the Empire State Building. James celebrates but feels sad that his family isn't with him. By the time the peach is on the streets, a large crowd of homeowners and journalists have gathered. Suddenly, the crowds part to reveal a wet and smashed up car. From the car emerges his two wicked aunts. Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker are wet, having crossed the Atlantic in their beat-up car. They walk towards James, pretending to be caring relatives. They hand the officer a photograph, confirming that they're the original peach owners, and try to whisk the boy away. James insists that he's the original owner of the peach and not them. The ants resist the urge to gauge his eyes out and lie to the officer, telling him that James is a chronic liar. Enraged, James stands on top of the truck and begins telling the crowd his story. How they attached it to a hundred seagulls and how they flew it over the ocean. His ants laugh at his story, suggesting that it's something he dreamed up. James stands by on his story, saying that all things started out as dreams, but he's here and he's made it. The wicked ants still insist on bringing him back, but the boy stands his ground. He screams at his aunts telling him that he's not going with them to be beaten and starved. The crowd gasps in horror at the revelations. His aunt's patience has run thin as they grab an axe and begin smashing the truck. Just then, a light falls down from the sky, James's bug family has arrived. They land on top of the peach, ready to help their little friend. Miss Spider throws James a string and he uses it to round up his two aunts. They pull them up in the air and spin the web around them muffling their mouths of their screams. The officer watches in awe as he realizes that James was telling the truth all along. James climbs up the peach and introduces the crowd to his family. He then gives the peach for the crowds to feast on. The people eat the peach right down to the pit. When it was done, they set up the pit in Central Park, where James Henry Trotter lived with his family, telling his adventures to all his friends and anyone willing to hear. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.